Hello everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. It is officially March, and with March we are approaching the equinox here in the northern hemisphere. It's going to be the vernal equinox or the spring equinox, um, but we are also approaching St. Patrick's Day, which is the one day of the year that people here in the United States dress up in like all green and wear you know, uh, they run around and they pinch people who aren't wearing green and they talk about the luck of the Irish, whatever that is. I'm going to talk about St. Patrick's Day next week, so don't worry there. But today I want to talk about luck and luck magic. Make sure you stick around until the end because I'm also going to be showing you how to make a sigil for good luck. So what is luck? What is this concept that we have that carrying around a trinket or performing some sort of ritual every day or before like a football game or something, where, where does this come from? Why do some people obsess over their rituals? Why is it such a big deal? And what exactly is luck? Does it have a place in witchcraft? Is it just a game of chance and statistics and probability? And in that case, does luck even matter? There are so many instances of luck in pop culture. From a young age, we start to hear about luck from TV, from family and friends, and from movies, and just the things that we partake in regularly. We even talk about St. Patrick's Day in school. I remember a Disney movie, even, which has to do with luck, called The Luck of the Irish. Does anyone else remember this movie? It was about a teenager who played basketball and he had to win this gold charm from some evil leprechaun or whatever to keep his family safe. Is it just me that remembers that movie? I thought it was strange. He battles this evil leprechaun in a basketball game. <laughs> and his grandpa in the movie was so old that he said he was the one that sliced the spud too thin to make potato chips. Anyway, depending on who you talk to, luck can be many different things. It can be a word that people use for things that are out of their control. For example, um, you almost got into an accident. You were lucky that you didn't get into that accident. It can be used to describe circumstances that can be influenced by our actions. This is why people carry around lucky charms and have different lucky objects that they either wear or use before different circumstances and situations. Luck can also be a self-fulfilling prophecy. When we are in a good mood, we tend to have a better outlook on things that happen to us. When we are in a bad mood, we tend to have a more pessimistic outlook on our situation and the things that happen to us. Both the person in the good mood and in the bad mood can be in the same situation, but the uh, person in a bad mood might deem themselves unlucky, and the person in a good mood might look at it different and deem themselves lucky. No matter where you go, people all over the world have superstitions and sayings, numbers and symbols that are either lucky or unlucky. Just look at the number 13 here in the United States and in other parts of the Western world. For a couple of different reasons, this number is considered unlucky. I actually covered this in um, a previous video and podcast episode that I'll link below. But this number is considered extremely unlucky on its own. Then you couple it together with a Friday, for example, and you have Friday the 13th, and it becomes even more unlucky depending on who is looking at the day and what's happening. Friday the 13th is considered one of the most unlucky, most unlucky or unluckiest? Friday the 13th is considered the unluckiest. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound right either. Whichever word it is, Friday the 13th is deemed to be very unlucky in the United States. And sometimes there are several Fridays the 13th in a single calendar year. On another note, the number 7 is considered to be extremely lucky. 7 is the number you see plastered everywhere on casino games and signs all over Las Vegas. When you have three sevens in a row, it's even better. I'm not going to talk about luck as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Instead, I want to look at luck from a more supernatural and occult perspective. Can we control our luck? 
does it even matter? And what, if anything, can influence the luck of our situation? As a witch, I know I have control over most of my life, except when the gods intervene. So it should come as no surprise that I believe I can influence my luck to be in my favor. I view luck as a combination of my actions, my energy, and the reactions of things around me. If I can influence the things around me, I can definitely make myself a luckier person. The easiest way to do this is to carry around lucky charms. Every time I say that, it reminds me of the cereal. But carry around little charms that you charge for luck, bless them for luck. Um, this is why people carry around things like the lucky rabbit's foot, they look for four-leaf clovers, and you can even keep lucky objects around your house. So let's talk about some of these common lucky objects that people keep with them and different ways that you can use them um, as a witch or a practitioner of magic. The first is a rabbit's foot. Now it's said that carrying around a rabbit's foot will make you a lucky person. The origins of this good luck charm aren't 100% clear and it may come from hoodoo but I'm not entirely sure so take that with a grain of salt. It's also said that the rabbit's foot could be a carryover of a European good luck charm called the Hand of Glory, which is a hand cut from a criminal and pickled and then carried with you. Yet another reason that people carry a rabbit's foot is for the connection with a rabbit's infamous mating cycle. You know, they procreate so fast. It's thought that the rabbit's foot would help the carrier with fertility and abundance. Wherever the good luck charm comes from, lucky rabbit's feet are sold in many gift shops and curio shops with no claim made to their authenticity. Honestly, the thought of carrying around a real dead rabbit's foot just grosses me out. Ugh, nope. Mm -mm. On a lighter note, um, we can talk about four leaf clovers. I remember as a kid spending hours on the playground at school with my friends well, I say hours, but you know, however long recess was. Um, scouring the grass and the clovers looking for a four-leaf clover. In hindsight, I realized that the odds of finding a four-leaf clover are very, very slim. I think I read somewhere that your chances of finding a four-leaf clover are 10,000 to one. So, you know, not great. Anyway, I can't find any historical evidence that points to why a four-leaf clover is considered lucky it might have something to do with the Shamrock and St. Patrick's Day, which we will talk about next week. Some sources say that the ancient Celts used to carry around four-leaf clovers as protective wards. Um, some other sources say that the four-leaf clover is considered lucky because when Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden, it's said that Eve plucked one last piece of nature from the garden, a four-leaf clover, to carry with her when she left. I like to contribute the luck of the four-leaf clover to its rarity. Lastly, let's talk about the horseshoe. I have fond memories of being at my Nana and Papa's house, and my Papa used to have a horseshoe hung above the door that led from the garage to the backyard. He told me that even when you take it down, you never turn the horseshoe over or all of your luck will run out. I've also heard it the other way, too, where you keep a horseshoe tilted upside down so good luck pours out over all who walk under. Either way, it's a cute story and it is something that connects me to my past. Horseshoes, in this sense, have always been lucky for me. Whether you use these traditional items to bring you good luck or you have an item of your own, it doesn't really matter. As long as the object is lucky for you and it carries the energy of being lucky for you, then I believe it's going to do its job. When you're creating a lucky charm and you are imbuing it with that energy and you're charging it, you're giving it purpose. What I always say, you're charging an object, you give it purpose, you give it a job. As long as the energy that you put into it matches what you want and your intention and you're very clear about it, then it should have no problem working. Regardless of what you think about luck magic, it shouldn't surprise you that people all over the world have their own little rituals and charms that they carry with them to bring them good luck. 
Sometimes these are just habits that we develop over the course of time. Sometimes they're rituals that we continue doing because they have produced results in the past. Something that we do in my family, and I have no idea where this came from, is when we have Chinese food, and we love our Chinese food, it's delicious. Uh, it's, the, <laughs> it's the food that my partner can eat the most of whenever. Um, anyway, whenever we have Chinese food and we are coming to the end of our meal and we have our fortune cookies, we have always said that your fortune will not come true or be true or um, resonate with you or whatever if you don't eat your cookie first. I have no idea where it came from, um, but I, to this day, if I have a fortune cookie, I will eat my cookie before looking at my fortune, even if that means cracking open the cookie and taking the fortune out and putting it face down on the table. I don't know why. I've never tracked it where, like, keeping track of, oh, this is what my fortune said, and did it happen, you know, I never experimented with it. But it's just something that has stuck around in my family. <laughs> Outside of rituals for luck, I think that objects we carry with us are imbued with our energy, and that's what makes them lucky. Before we go today, I want to leave you with a little sigil I designed for good luck. Sigils are so versatile that even a written sigil can be used as a good luck charm. If we believe hard enough, if we give our energy to this object and let it know that it's supposed to be lucky, then it is. This is essentially what we do every time we charge an object with an intention and give it purpose. If it didn't have purpose on its own, then it does when you give it that purpose. This sigil is created from the phrase, I attract good luck and fortune, and can be drawn on a piece of paper and carried in your pocket, your wallet, or wherever you see fit to bring in the luck that you desire. So let me know down in the comments below if you have any lucky charms that you carry with you, if you have any little rituals that you perform to bring you good luck. Um, we are big football fans, or I say we, but there's only a couple of us who are big football fans in the house. I don't really care. Um, so it's interesting to me to see some of the things that the football fans in my house do before and during a game. Um, so if you have any luck charms or lucky little rituals or any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I will talk to you next time.